So team, keep it clean. We got some big news in regards to our Baltimore Ravens, specifically around the offensive line that should help put so many of our minds at ease. Tyler Linderbaum's status has been a subject of conversation for the longest. Ever since he went out, Harbaugh said, oh, he's going to be out for a little bit, but he should be all right. He should be fine. Now, I always tell people, Harbaugh can say one thing, but seeing is believing. And while John Harbaugh, his status as an updater of injuries, it has improved recently over the past couple of years. He has been a lot more spot on than he was previously. And I think he learned a lot from his previous mistakes. That's what life is all about. So shout out to you, Jonathan Harbaugh. But with Tyler Linderbaum, a lot of Ravens fans have been worried, especially with all the reports that we were hearing about the offensive line from yesterday. It was a scary sight on Twitter. My goodness, it was a big yikes. But Jeff Zrebic. He basically said every little thing is going to be all right. And let's read exactly what he replied because he was talking to ATIC45 on Twitter and ATIC45 asked him this question. He said, Jeff, do you get the sense that the team is concerned about Tyler Linderbaum's availability for week one? And that's a great question because, again, we have not seen Tyler Linderbaum. Week one, it's not right there, but it's like right there. But Jeff Strebeck said the following. He said, I haven't gotten that sense yet, but it's been a few days since I've been around the team. Last I heard, he was on schedule to play, barring any setback. So that sounds great, That really, especially coming from Jeff. Because, again, we all came to our own conclusions. We all assume different things and whatnot. But, you know, Jeff, Jeff just don't say anything just to say it. Jeff is spot on with his reporting. He is accurate with his reporting. He is like, yeah, he, he's 10 for 10. When it comes to reporting, we absolutely trust everything that Jeff Zrebik says because he has been holding it down for years. His credibility is through the roof. So with him saying that, that lets us know like, hey, Tyler Linderbaum, even though Harbaugh did say it, he did say it. So give credit to Harbaugh too now. But that lets us know like, all right, cool. All right, I'm cool. Tyler Linderbaum going to be back any day now. We just waiting on him. So we'll see you week one, Tyler Linderbaum. Also, a good question. Shout out to Sarah Ellison. Because Jeff, Jeff was chilling today because Ravens ain't been doing nothing today. Uh, they ain't been practicing anything like that. So Jeff was just responding to a lot of people's questions today. So Sarah Ellison asked him, she, she said, Jeff, I'm curious your perspective on why you think Ben Cleveland has not gotten much of a chance to compete for the starting right guard spot during training camp. He wasn't a pro bowler or anything, but I thought he played solid when Zeitler went down last year. And that's true. When Ben Cleveland stepped in and filled in, he looked good. He was doing his thing. We had heard for years we've been hearing reports of bad practices and whatnot about him not being in shape at different times and whatnot. But maybe he's just a test taker. Maybe he, he don't study, but maybe he's just a test taker. Maybe that's what it is. Because Ben Cleveland, he can play some football. But anyway, Jeffrey Big replied with the following. He said, I think his floor is a bit higher than some of the other guys given his experience, even if his ceiling isn't. But there's clearly a difference in opinion in how well outsiders think he's played and how well they think he's played. They talking about the Baltimore Ravens and practice habits, physicality come into play, too. So basically, Jeff saying, like the way that we are looking at a Ben Cleveland, it ain't necessarily the way that the Baltimore Ravens are looking at a Ben Cleveland. Um, but he acknowledged they, they've been looking at more than what we see. Because obviously we don't see the practice habits. We don't see, well, we see the physicality when he's playing, but maybe at practice is a whole nother story. So there's a lot of stuff that we don't see as fans, as we all know, um, that the coaching staff sees a lot more than we do. Because we see the players on Sundays or Mondays, Thursdays, whenever they play. That's when we see them. But the coaching staff sees them four, five days a week. But she also followed up and said, yes. My hunch was they already knew Cleveland's floor and were curious if Daniel Filele's ceiling could be higher. So basically she's saying that they already knew what the worst Ben Cleveland could be. So they were curious to see if Daniel Filele, his potential was better than that of a Ben Cleveland. She also said poor practice habits will also put a player in any coach's doghouse. In terms of physicality, that's probably my biggest surprise about Daniel Filele so far. I expected him to be a bit slower due to his size, but... I also thought he'd maul some guys. Haven't seen that too much yet. Maybe with more experience and confidence, it'll come. And that is something that we were talking about yesterday. Uh, we talked about Daniel Falele. Maybe it was a couple days ago. But this week, when we talked about Daniel Falele, we talked about how we just, we want him. He, this, this dude is a giant. He's a giant. So he got the size. That, that, that ain't no issue. But some, he, he can be sort of a gentle giant. And we want him to just get nasty, get downright 
nasty. If you got to even make up something in your head before every game, like Daniel Farley, oh, this the, the, the guy I'm going up against, he was talking about my family. He was disrespecting me. Even if he, even if he ain't disrespect you, lie to yourself so you can get upset so you could just boom. Knock him out as an offensive lineman, man. Do what you got to do to get nasty. But anyway, um, she said, do you think the decision is pretty much made? Daniel Falele, week one. Basically saying that Daniel Falele will be the starter at right guard. Jess Rebick said, they could always, they being the Baltimore Ravens, they could always backtrack next week and say, let's play it safe and put Cleveland back at right guard. And he'd have a week and a half to settle in. But... Nobody else has gotten a chance, and we're 24 hours away from their final preseason game. You'd think that would have happened by now. So, essentially, it seems as if Jeff is pretty much confirming something that uh, many of y'all figured already, that Daniel Falele will be the starter at right guard for the Baltimore Ravens. And then that's something that a lot of us already assume, but Jeff is letting it be known that Daniel Falele is looking like he is in the lead for that position. So, based off of all of our assumptions, and, and this is no surprise right here, but Jeff is essentially confirming it, not officially officially, because, again, the Baltimore Ravens, they got to do that, but Jeff letting it be known who the candidates are right now, the leading candidates for that starting offensive line spots uh, from left to right, that being Ronnie Stanley at left tackle, at left guard. He didn't confirm it. Now, he didn't speak on this one. But Andrew Voorhees, that's what a lot of us are assuming. At center, our guy Tyler Linderflinder, Tyler Linderbaum, who is going to get paid. Uh, we saw what Creed Humphrey got paid. Tyler Linderbaum looking at that like, oh, boy, wait till I cash in with these Ravens in a couple of years. But anyway, uh, then at right guard, Daniel Filele. And at right tackle, nothing's confirmed yet, again, but we all are expecting Roger Rosengarden to be there. Now, real quick, before we continue, are you a graphic designer or do you know of a really good graphic designer? Because I got a couple of different things I want to get done, but the first thing I want to do is enhance the live streams. I want to have a live scoreboard uh, for every Ravens game during our live stream so that can just make it look a whole lot better and it can be a little more enjoyable that way too. So if you are somebody or you know somebody, please have them get in contact with me. You can send me a DM on Twitter or you can send me an email at ingravenviz at gmail.com if you're serious about it. If, if it's you, or them it, it will be a paid opportunity i can't have you working for free or nothing like that so i appreciate any of y'all who know somebody or if it's you that does it please hit me up i got to give the biggest of the biggest shout out to our newest team keep it clean patron my guy Corey s Corey. i no no, no excuse me Corey. we at team keep it clean we all appreciate you uh for becoming a team keep it clean patron and showing some extra support to the channel much love to you hope everything is hope everything is great with you and again if you got any questions any questions you want featured on the channel you ain't gotta send them via email you can send them directly on patreon love you so now we are at my favorite part of these videos where we feature questions from y'all if you would ever like to send in a question to be featured in a video you can send it to team keep it clean at gmail.com or if you are a team keep it clean patron you can send it directly on Patreon. First question came from my guy Keontae. He said, NCAA 25 got me one. To, hold up. You got the game title wrong. It's college football 25. But we all know what you meant. Anyway, he said, NCAA 25 got me one to recruit right now. Let me come back to present day for you. Because what he did yesterday, he sent a question on Shiloh Sanders and somebody else. And I'm like, I'm like hold up. We, we didn't even get to week one of the regular season. We still got a preseason game to go. And he talking about the draft for next year. Like, whoa, slow down there, my friend. But anyway, he said, uh, we have got a lot of news about Big Daniel Falele on the offensive line. But how is Salah doing? And why hasn't he been getting as many reps as Falele? Good timing with that. Because of the report that we talked about earlier on in this video, that clears that up because it sounds like Daniel Falele is going to be the starter. So there will be no need to give somebody who's not the starter as many reps as the starter because you want to get the starter as ready as possible, especially since this will be Daniel Falele's first time playing guard in the NFL. But with Salah, I haven't really heard much about him. Um, last year, didn't really hear much about him. I know he was inactive a lot of games. And then this year, really haven't heard much about him either but he said i'm sure with him sala already playing left guard he could become a good right guard what are your thoughts Dep, i think just Dep. i think sala will just continue to be a dead piece for the ravens offensive line next question came from my guy harrison he said i ain't raven hope the family is well and that you are doing well hey we're doing really really good i appreciate you harrison he said i had the awesome opportunity to meet you last year at the tailgate against cincinnati so hopefully 
You can do something along those lines again. No, 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 no. You, you ain't had no awesome. It was the other way around. I had the privilege of meeting you. Uh, but he said, uh, anyway, to get to my question, I know during the preseason, the focus has been on the offensive line. <laughs> you spot on about that. But what seems concerning to me as well is the QB depth. I had the opportunity to go to both preseason games this year. And while the old line was questionable, I felt so was the role of quarterback. Josh Johnson, while he had good stats the second game against Atlanta, it did not feel to me like what the stats represented. I just saw a video of Cam Newton talking about how he would still like to be on a team to develop young and new quarterbacks. I know Cam has a lot of respect for Lamar, and while he had a career that came short, he was at one time an elite quarterback. That he certainly was. I know there's also talks about RG3 coming back after being fired from ESPN, so I just wanted your thoughts. As always, love the content and hope the community is staying good. Team Game Clean, y'all staying good? Put in the comment section if you staying good. Put in the comment section just how you feeling. Let us know how you're doing. I appreciate when y'all do that. So, he also said, P.S., I was one who was talking about watching your videos in the cafeteria, LOL, in college. I don't know if you remember. Hey, hopefully, while you're watching the videos, they, they weren't so boring to make you fall asleep and, and put your head in your food. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, but anyway, no, I, I appreciate you, though, man. Um, Cam Newton, uh, you talked about he said that he was looking to develop young and new quarterbacks. Uh, Lamar Jackson, still young. Um, but Cam Newton... He, I would not mind him as a backup. Uh, Cam Newton has already said that he would not mind backing up Lamar Jackson. And this could possibly, maybe, I, well, it's kind of late now. Like, I just, I don't think it's a realistic um, thing to expect. Uh, because Cam, like, we are a day away. Well, depending on when, you, when you're watching this, you may be watching this the day of. But we are a day away from the last preseason game. These teams getting ready to get down to their final 53 uh, I think they got to be down to 53 by Tuesday. So they're going to start cutting a lot of players very, very soon. Cam Newton, if he were to come in as Baltimore Ravens backup, one, he would have to be in football shape. Is he in football shape? I don't know. But he would have to come in, um, and they were given a playbook. He would have to learn it really fast. Not saying that he can't, because I'm sure he can. Like, Cam Newton done this. But um, I feel like it would just be a lot to ask somebody, like, boom, like, at this point of the preseason. Now... The, what, the other way you could look at it, which I completely understand, and be like, hey, an upgrade is an upgrade at backup quarterback. And that part, <laughs> I ain't mad at that at all. And, and, and it ain't like whoever the backup quarterback that we would have, it ain't like they're going to be playing anyway, unless the Ravens like really blowing somebody out, which I do expect that to happen sometimes. So I guess the backup will be playing sometimes. But so it, it, whether it be Cam Newton, if it was RG3, if it was Ryan Tannehill, whoever it was be, it, well, if it's going to be Josh Johnson, which it seems like it is going to be. Um, but I feel like with Cam Newton, I feel like the Ravens just, I don't think that they would do that. I think they're just very, very comfortable with Josh Johnson. He feels like a safe guy for them, and he's cheap, too. So I don't think they're going to go in another direction at backup quarterback. Cam Newton will be nice. RG3 will be solid, but neither one of them is going to happen. This question came from my guy Gus. He said, with the 2024 NFL season, Devin Leary, 13 days away, I want to point out a few things that the Ravens have and what could use some work. He said, good. DBs look amazing. Nate and Marlo are going to be locked down. Love watching Arthur Millette play ball. Brandon Stevens can ball out, but we're going to touch back on that. Washington looks great when healthy, and Pepe Williams can be a hidden gem and ball out, and not to mention the safeties. Oh, yeah, you ain't even got to mention them, but continuing. He said, running backs are going to be scary, not only uh, to start the season, but when Keaton Mitchell comes back, Thunder and Lightning, baby, with a storm of Justice Hill in the backfield, might as well just be a hurricane. Oh, I like that. I like how you put that together. He said, man, the defensive line is all right. I feel we could use one more vet guy, Cough, uh, Hassan Reddick. Matter Beaks, Adolfo Away, and uh, Michael Pierce are scary. Linebacker with Roquan, he is the best linebacker room. Well, we have the best linebacker room in the league. Where it gets mad is if Roquan would ever go down, them boys in the trenches are gonna have to work a little extra hard. Don't get me wrong, T23 nickname suggestion for Trent Simpson. I like that one because that's smooth and that's smooth for everybody. You know how sometimes you can have a nickname and some people may not be able to say it the right way and it may sound a little awkward or whatnot. It's like the the school where Lamar Jackson went to. When you initially read it, people will say oh, Louisville. Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky, yeah, Louisville. But it's Louisville. It's Louisville. And I, I had to learn that the hard way. So I ain't trying to put nobody down who says Louisville, cause that, but it's Louisville. Anyway, um, he said, uh, but T23, uh, don't get me wrong, T23 can ball out and we'll get back to him. But other than him, linebacker looks shaky in my eyes. 
Well, I guess you ain't really feeling Malik Harrison like that. Um, I feel like the depth at linebacker. Uh, yes, yeah, it's because he got Chris Boyd too, a veteran. He can come in. He like a sort of like an Anthony Levine, but at the linebacker position, somebody that could do a little bit of everything. Oh, but anyway, continuing, he said, bad. This is where it gets specific and tricky. Brandon Stevens has shown flashes of his potential, but I feel like he needs to work on his jump ball a little bit. I mainly say this because of him versus George Pickens, and I'm pretty sure the first down play that ended our season, correct me if I'm wrong, was on him. Oh, uh, Marquez uh, Valdez Scantling, MVS. Was it on Brandon Stevens? I think it was, but, like, I get what you're saying with that. Oh, that game was just uh, the AFC Championship. Was, uh, anyway. Um, but Ravens, I mean, he he had a really, really great year last year, and I can't be like, oh man, he's bad because of one play. I, I get what you're saying; he need to work on his jump ball. So you you seeing a, a, a trait of his game that needs to improve, regardless of how most of the season went, because his season was really good last year. But you're still looking for things that he can improve on. I, I, I respect that. Um, as far as the way that the season ended, though, I mean, the Ravens should have never even been in that position in the first place. But anyway, um. He also said, uh, Trent Simpson, T23, he's also shown flashes, and the main reason he's down here is because of multiple plays. I've watched him just throw himself at the ball carrier, and I know he's round, and it's only here and there, but I saw it multiple times in the preseason game. Mm. Well, we're going to see. I, I feel like with Trent Simpson, uh, I feel like he's looked a lot, he's looked very comfortable uh, in the preseason, so that's a good sign, but I think what will make him even more comfortable, you know how, like, if you go to a party, and you you know some people, but you ain't really cool like that with a lot of people. So you might feel kind of like lonely and awkward and whatnot. Um, but you still there dancing and whatnot, doing your thing, you chilling and whatever. But you're just not as comfortable as you normally would be. But then your best friend shows up. You like, hey, what's up, baby? Hey, what's going on? So then when you see them, oh, you feel so much better. You feel even more loose. You feel even more lively. You feel even more comfortable. You're like, hey, let's go, baby. That's Roquan Smith for Trenton Simpson. In my opinion. He also said, offensive line is looking shaky. Uh, with it only being practiced in the preseason, the boys in the trenches are looking a little rough. Now, I understand Tyler Linderbaum is injured. I'm just saying, hopefully, it doesn't carry over into the regular season. See, timing is everything. Look at the, the report we got. We talked about it at the beginning of this video. Look at that, baby. But anyway, uh, he said, love watching the videos, and I hope Team Keep It Clean is all having an amazing day. Go Ravens. Hey, much love to you, Gus. Appreciate you, as always.